Three months after the worst nuclear disaster in history, there is daunting news from Japan. Officials still trying to cool three melted nuclear cores with seawater, releasing radioactive steam into the atmosphere and created, creating vast liquid pools of toxic waste. The situation remains incredibly dangerous. I spoke with Michio Kaku about this ongoing crisis a short time ago. He's a professor of physics at City University in New York and author of Physics of the Future. Michio Kaku, thanks for joining us. Do they have control of the situation at the site? No. It's still a ticking time bomb. Realize that after the big Sumatra tsunami, mm -hmm. uh, 90 days after that, three months after that, there was a huge aftershock. If they have another aftershock, and they're not in cold shutdown yet till next year, the accident could start all over again. It's like hanging by your fingernails. Yeah, it's stable, but you're hanging by your fingernails. Americans think this crisis is over, or that some even think that maybe it's solved or it's contained. It's, it's not. We're, what's happening right now? In the last two weeks, everything we knew about that accident has been turned upside down. We were told three partial meltdowns, don't worry about it. Now we know it was 100% core melt in all three reactors. Radiation, minimal that was released. Now we know it was comparable to the radiation at Chernobyl. And as far as evacuation, yeah, 12 miles, that's it. You don't have to evacuate beyond 12 miles. Now they find hot spots, four hot spots outside the evacuation zone. 34,000 school children now have radiation badges when they go to Kindergartners school. Kindergartners with radiation badges. Down to badges. four years of age. Can you imagine that? Kindergarten kids with radiation badges going to school. So all the mythology of the accident has been turned upside down because the utility has finally fessed up to how severe this accident really was. In your view, did they not know how bad it was or they knew and they didn't tell or they just were completely blown away by the scope of the disaster? I'm a physicist and we tried to reconstruct the accident in our computers given the feeble amount of information they gave us. We knew it was much more severe than they were saying because radiation was coming out left and right. So in other words, they lied to us. They knew how much radiation was coming out. They knew the danger. They knew how much core melting was taking place. But they tried to put a happy face on it. As a reporter, within hours of the earthquake and tsunami, within hours, not even a day, there were already statements from the company and from the International Atomic Energy uh, Association saying that there had been safe shutdown of all of the reactors. And we know, of course, in the end, that that simply wasn't true. But from the very beginning, they were trying to tell us that this was a safe situation. Within hours of the accident, we now know it was like the Keystone Cops, people that are clueless, headless just running around crazy not knowing what to do we can now reconstruct that accident minute by minute hour by hour and we can see this chaos that erupted in the leadership of the utility what's happening to the people who are working there now well as you know workers are being sent in and they're getting uh, you know like a year's dose of radiation just within like 10 minutes at a time at Chernobyl, 600,000 workers had to be mobilized, each one going in just for a few minutes, each one getting a medal from Gorbachev. This will be the 100-year cleanup. How, how long will it take to clean this up, in your view? 50 to 100 years. And we're uh, not there yet. We're not to the point of talking about the cleanup yet because they haven't stopped the reaction. It's, it's still happening. Cleanup hasn't even started yet. They're not in cold shutdown till next year. Cold shutdown is when boiling stops. Right. It's boiling water right there at the reactor, releasing radiation into the environment and releasing radiation into gigantic vats. How are they storing and disposing of this stuff? That's the killer because they have all these vats that are filling up now. They may have to dump it into the ocean again. At that point, the Chinese, the Koreans, the fishermen, they get up all in arms because there's so much damage that every time you put water in, it leaks right out again, highly radioactive, and it's filling up at the site now. So wh what do they do with it? Right now, they're just uh, w counting the number of gallons as they pile up, desperately trying to bring more vats in. But uh, once they saturate, they're going to have to dump. And well, at that point, it's another crisis. Let's talk about the radiation in the environment, in the atmosphere. We've been told that it would be measurable but minuscule amounts on the U.S. West Coast, around the world. Is that true? It's still minimal around the world. Most of the damage is concentrated within 20 miles, 50 miles of the reactor accident itself. That's where we have the hot spots. That's where we have 20 times normal amount of radiation in schoolyards outside the evacuation zone. But in New York City, you can actually see it in the milk. You can actually see that the iodine-131 actually spiked a little bit in our milk in New York City, but it's very small. 
Just even hearing that, though, I mean, even hearing that you can detect it, that there's a, a catastrophe that is wor the worst catastrophe, industrial catastrophe in history, that we can see it in milk in New York, that's frightening. That's right. This could be the granddaddy of all industrial accidents, topping Chernobyl at $200 billion, topping the Gulf oil spill at about $15 billion, topping the Challenger Columbia disasters in space at about $10 billion. This could be the, the world's record holder for an industrial accident. How many a hundred years to clean up the site? I mean, when you're looking at this much radiation, three exposed cores, mm -hmm. this much environmental damage, I mean, that must be staggering for that part of the country. It's unimaginable. Realize that at Chernobyl, it was just one core's worth of radiation causing a $200 billion accident, and it's still ongoing. Here we have 20 cores worth of radiation, three totally melted, one damaged, and the rest in spent fuel ponds. Right. 20 cores worth of highly radioactive materials. And it's impossible at this point to even imagine the long-term health effects for the people in that area. At Chernobyl, oh. um, even the, taking very, very conservative estimates, you're talking about perhaps 10,000 uh, leukemia and thyroid cancer cases because of, of Chernobyl. This could be comparable. All right, Michio Kaku, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Certainly a frightening story still unfolding there. When we come back...